Hello and welcome to the video channel. My name is Peter Walters, G3OJV. One of the things that we as ham radio operators have to do is to erect aerials. And in times gone by, it was wooden poles and uh, metal two inch um, poles, scaffold poles, aluminium poles, all of which um, had problems because first of all, to buy them, it was a bit difficult to get them delivered. And secondly, they were quite heavy. In recent times, we've uh, found that uh, fiberglass masts, telescopic fiberglass masts, offer a lot of advantages. They're very light, they're very strong, and they're very easy to erect. So it makes sense to take a look at fiberglass poles and see if they will fit into your operating situation, whether it be the garden or portable operation. Now there's a wide range to choose from. My recommendation is the spider poles. They come from Germany and they come in a wide range of sizes starting off at 12 meters and going up to a whacking great big tall uh, telescopic mast that will easily support um, a vertical for 80 meters. So there's, uh, there's quite a range there, but they are strong. I've used them for a number of years now. They're very strong. They don't deteriorate in the weather and it's worth paying that little bit extra um, for a decent fiberglass pole because you want it to last for a few years. One of the good things about fiberglass poles is they're basically non-conductive, at least the ones that we sell are, so you can actually uh, tape a vertical element to the mast. They're very good for supporting downward loads. They're not so good for supporting lateral loads unless you put a backstay. If you put a backstay there, then they will support the lateral load as well. In the main, they are used for supporting wire antennas, and this is where they really excel, both at home and for portable uh, work uh, in the field. Now, one of the uh, antennas that it really does uh, support very easily and very well is the inverted V, because the, the antenna is then supported both sides uh, it doesn't need any, any, any backstays, so an inverted V is a very simple antenna to erect with a fiberglass pole. For H HF operation, uh, you can use some fairly light wire, and I would suggest you use something like RG58 coax down the mast because that itself is light, and for HF operation that's perfectly okay, uh, up to 100 watts. And of course, because they're telescopic antennas, they're very easy to transport, very easy to uh, buy and uh, have sent to you and likewise they're very easy to transport if you're going to use some portable operation uh, you can put it in the boot of the car uh, and uh, it, it'll uh, it'll stow away fairly easily there um, if you've got a small car then you may have to just put perhaps a, the, the, the seat down but anyway they're, they're, they're very easy to put into into a car and transport around so let's have a closer look at the fiberglass mast see how you can install it in your garden or use it portable now here you can see the fiberglass mast laid on my lawn and it's certainly about 1.2, 1.3 metres tall when it's telescoped down. I've put a screw eye into the top of the antenna which makes it very easy to put wire through and run it backwards and forwards or secure it to the top if you're going to use it as a vertical antenna. Now although the way of stopping the a fiberglass mask telescoping back in itself has been fairly well documented. I'm just showing it here just uh, for those that may not have seen it. The simplest way of fastening the, fastening the um, uh, fiberglass pole so that it doesn't telescope back in itself is to use Jubilee or hose clamp clips. Uh, and I show here um, the method that um, I use. And you can see that you put the clamp round the section that would otherwise slide in. You don't, you don't try and clamp the section below. You put the clamp on the section to stop it telescoping back in. Um, and this is quite useful actually because sometimes if you're making a vertical antenna um, you want the fiberglass pole to be a certain length and not an uh, exact length of the various sections. So sometimes you want half a section out and with the uh, hose clamps of course you can do this. Now here's a tip uh, for using the hose clamps. Um, if you're familiar with them you'll know that uh, the obvious way to tighten them up 
um, is really with a screwdriver because there's a there's a place for a screwdriver to go. The problem with that is that it's quite a large gap there. It needs a pretty large screwdriver to go in. And when you're pressing it to tighten it up, there's always a risk of that screwdriver slipping and going into your hand. So um, I, what I do is I, I found a box um, spanner that fits the clamps. And so I've got a box spanner on the end of a little sort of screwdriver and uh, I use that. And you can see here, and it's so much easier. There's no risk of it um, slipping and causing damage. And you can also get it tight. And it's, if you're going to use it out portable, it's much, much quicker with this box spanner to tighten it and untighten it than it is with the screwdriver. So there's a tip there. After a time, uh, the uh, fiberglass uh, mask will get a little bit dirty. And I found that the best way to keep things sliding easily is simply to clean it. Um, just get a wet cloth and clean each section and that will enable the sections to slide easily. Um, I wouldn't recommend using any lubricant. Um, it becomes very messy and very slippery. So just uh, just clean it with, uh, with water or soapy water and uh, that will uh, keep your mast in, uh, in good nick. Now when it comes to the uh, ground mounting of the fiberglass antenna, there's all sorts of different options. Uh, one of my favourite options is to use a um, bit of steel channel, right angle steel channel. Uh, I'll show you a section here. I haven't, I can't actually show you the antenna mounted um, outside at the moment, but um, this is the sort of thing I use, a bit of a uh, right angled steel um, uh, section. And the fiberglass will sit snugly in that section, that right angle section, which stops uh, any sort of lateral movement. And all you've got to do then is to come up with an idea of fastening it. Now for semi-permanent or portable operation, there are two methods I have used. One is to use the sort of luggage straps that uh, you can get from any car accessory shop or Halfords or something like that. You can see here that so these elasticated straps um, can be wrapped round and fastened and it's quite a secure method of mounting it particularly if you were to use that uh, that steel channel that I, 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 I mentioned here. Um, the other option is to use hose clamps you can get some large hose clamps and these work extremely well um, and if you use the box spanner idea then it's quite easy to put uh, put those on very quickly and I guess that that would also could also be used for portable operation I'm sure I'm sure you've got your own ideas as to um, other methods but these are a couple of methods that I've used and as I say they, they work quite well um, even if it's sort of semi-permanent or dare I say permanent the luggage straps not quite sure about um, how they'd weather I mean I've had a pair out uh, that have uh, survived the winter um, but uh, when we're talking about several years then you may have to replace them occasionally but there again they're not, <laughs> they're not very expensive the telescopic fiberglass antenna such as the spider pole is great for verticals the uh, shortest one that spider beams do is the spider bowl spider pole 12 which is uh, 12 meters long so it means to say that you could actually build yourself a 40 meter vertical uh, very easily and uh, that's quite an interesting antenna actually because it gives good low angular radiation and it's also an interesting antenna if you've got a small garden because if you build yourself a 40 meter vertical using something like the spider pole you can get away with just a simple ground stake now i know some people might say oh that's you need radials well of course you need radials if you want to improve it but it will actually work i've i've tried it i've used it so it does work um, obviously if you can put radials out so much the better uh, for portable operation of course uh, very often you've got more freedom you can just lay radials along the ground and uh, i'll try and do a video actually on radials um, in in the near future so spider pole is great for that but the one thing that um, uh, i found um, is that you've got to have a method of connecting the coax cable to it and we all love PL259 plugs, don't we? Well, some of us don't. But anyway, we love a plug on the end of the cable so that you can plug it into the base of the antenna. Well, of course, if you're making your own vertical antenna, you've got the wire going up and down the uh, length of the uh, 
the fiberglass pole, but somehow you've got to attach the coax cable. And how nice it would be if you could just plug something in at the base. Well, there is an answer to that. Spider beams have produced this. Quite an interesting device. And I was quite taken by this. So let's have a closer look. Well, here you can see the box. It's a nice small black box with an SO239, very convenient on it. And at the far end, you've got the connection there which should connect to your uh, aerial wire. Uh, with it, you get the hardware kit uh, with the various um, wing nuts and the washers, and also you get some uh, tie wraps to fasten it to the uh, base of the antenna. The antenna element is fastened to the unit using a bolt um, and a uh, crimp tag plus uh, a wing nut. You also get extra tags for the radials. Uh, there are two radial terminals, uh, each one could take several radials. Uh, you put a crimp tag on and then you've got a wing nut to fasten it, so it's a very quick process. Quite a uh, useful little item, and uh, that uh, item made by Spider Beams is called the RCB60MM. RCB60MM, and uh, it's uh, I mean obviously it can be used with any uh, any um, fiberglass pole really. I actually um, think that I would attach that using one of the hose clamps rather than the. Um, uh, tie wraps. Uh, the problem with tie wraps is that they, they've got to be sort of cut and therefore they're, they're sort of disposable items and you can soon get through a few um, tie wraps. So I would tend to use a um, hose clamp. Uh, I'll just show you that on the screen that the method I would use. So that's it. The Spider Beam RCB 60mm, quite a simple item, but uh, I think it has a lot of uses and it certainly makes um, connecting uh, your coax cable to your homebrew vertical so much easier. There we are. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please uh, uh, press the subscribe button if you wish to be kept uh, informed of up and coming videos. I do appreciate um, you. Uh, clicking on this channel and I hope it's um, is helpful to you. Certainly got a lot of um, complimentary um, comments so that's much appreciated and as I've said before I really can't respond to all of them but I do actually read all of them so uh, that's, um, that's a promise to you. Anyway, in the meantime enjoy your ham radio, take care, see you soon.